Human figures are often used in architectural drawings to indicate scale, to suggest building function, and to add atmosphere in an otherwise lifeless composition. Though in my freelance rendering days, it was such a pain in the butt because I had to pay attention to different variables like showing the correct age, ethnicity, seasonality, and activity. If I didn't get any of these correct, it could really throw someone off looking at it. Fortunately, with freehand drawing, there are a lot less to worry about because drawings are generally more forgiving with details. But unfortunately, there are many different ways to represent human figures. So in this video, I thought I would just share three styles so you can avoid decision paralysis when it comes down to choosing the right style for your drawing. Hi, my name is Henry and I share my architecture drawing tips on this channel. I'll be using an app called Procreate for this demonstration. This style number one is the most abstract and I call it the human blob. The character defining feature of this style has the limbs of the person as a pointed sword. The pointier, the better. Almost like you can stab someone with these legs and arms. The head to body ratio is not particularly important in this style because as you can see, all the body shapes are kind of jammed into a shape in the middle. I use this style when I'm showing something conceptual, like in a diagram or in a drawing that doesn't have a lot of articulation or line work. I don't think this is very appropriate if you're putting it in a drawing where you're showing a lot of architecture. Also, it looks better if you're using it further in the composition like in the midground or background than having it close to the foreground. Anatomy, seasonality, and age doesn't really apply in this style. I think it's more of a cute way to add some life to a drawing, which can be done very quickly. Quick tip, if you are drawing this in Procreate, you can increase the streamline property in your brush setting so your line work is much smoother that removes the natural shake in your hand. When you're finished, just revert the setting. Style number two, I call it the cat people because it's very similar to many of the AutoCAD human figures that have existed for many years. If you've used AutoCAD before, you might have come across a library of people like it most of them are made by a continuous polyline. In this style, it definitely reads better as a human being with more proportionate head to body ratio. Scale and activity can also be easily discerned by looking at it. Drawing wise, most of the time you can get away with just the outline of the human figure. I find it helpful when I have a reference image next to me when I'm drawing. Unless you're Michelangelo, I don't think many people can just whip up drawing like this from their imagination. Maybe some can, but I'm not going to spend the next couple of years trying to understand human anatomy so I can draw this with my eyes closed. Last brooch is definitely the hardest of the three, but it's also the most used for me. And I will call this the realistic style because it shows people in a much greater detail in the way they're dressed, their body shape, and movement. I think this is more appropriate when the space or architecture is more defined and you're really using people as a way to embellish the drawing to tell a convincing story. So you have to be more considerate and precise with their location and choose people that will add to the narrative and not distract the viewer. When it comes to drawing, I don't even attempt to draw this freehand because I don't have that expertise. So I find it much easier to compose for people in Photoshop or on the iPad first with cutouts that I find from different websites online. Then I will load this in as a background in Procreate to trace over on top. It's a small hack, but who cares how you arrived at it. Now you have three styles in your pocket, which you can exercise right away, but it's equally important to understand some basic principles about composition so your drawing doesn't look weird and you may not even know why. First principle is the horizon line. If you're standing on a level street, as a rule of thumb, people's heads should align with this horizon line, but their feet will rise into the distance. Of course, some people are taller than others, but that difference is fairly negligible. So in your drawing, if people's head is significantly above or below this horizontal line, unless they're kids, then it's going to look strange in the perspective. Second principle, think about where to add people. Don't just put people in your scene for the sake of putting them in. Think about how they should be engaging with the space and the environment. 
generally try to place people to highlight a particular design or a feature if you can. There's no need to place people next to dumpsters even if it looks good. Lastly, identify negative space in your scene that can be made more balanced by adding a few people. Think about what kind of people make sense here. It could be an individual person or a group of people. Try to have a balance between the loners and groups of people. You want to avoid having a bunch of models walking around your scene, which has happened to me before. If you want to grab a high resolution template of the three style of drawing from this tutorial, you can download them in the link below. They are sized for 11 by 17 size paper, which is the size that I typically use for illustrations. And in the comments below, I'd love to hear which style you think you're going to use. As always, if you found this content helpful, please give that like button a fist bump because it really helps pushing this educational content to more people. Thanks for watching again. I will see you next time.